I just realized y'all are at home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Locked down. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to North Courts. Welcome to my home. Welcome to Javon's home. Welcome to Megan's home. We are staying safe. We are following the orders, the stay at home order, but the Canadian basketball content keeps rolling. We're going to keep it rolling. Javon, what's something that caught your eye this past couple of weeks? The play of RJ Barrett, man. I, you know, I look back to his rookie season when he was left off of those rookie teams. Uh, you know, and the knock on him was that he couldn't, he couldn't really shoot the basketball. You know, of late, everybody's been talking about how well he's been shooting the basketball. Over the last 40 games, he's shooting about 40%. Why I'm excited about that is because, you know, I had a chance to, to stay with him in the offseason or be with him a little in the offseason and just watch him, you know, work out. And he really put into his craft and really honed his craft. Um, you know, there was days where he would, you know, he wouldn't shoot the basketball while he'd get down on himself. But, you know, there was that competitive nature, that competitive instinct. He jumped right back the next day, you know, and would go, you know, 30 out of 40 in some drills and just really locked in. So, you know, just to see where he's at now, just to see everybody celebrating him and how well he's playing, you know, I have to give him his applause. And, and, and obviously he hit a, you know, a big shot to close out the Raptors just the other night. So, tough, mm. but, I'm, but I'm really happy for the kid. A dagger, a dagger in Raptors fans' hearts. Megan, what's something that caught your eye? I think the simple fact that we saw – you know, when you look at the NCAA Women's Tournament, no matter what, we were going to get a Canadian winning that thing because we had one on each team in the Final Four. When you look at, you know, Shania, uh, Shina Pell Pellington, who arguably she kept Arizona, she helped keep Arizona in that final championship game. Then you have Letitia Miri, who was playing, Aaliyah Edwards, you know, that heartbreaking loss that they had, and Alyssa Jerome. So no matter what, we were getting a Canadian winning in that thing. But they, they all put on for the country. They all put on for the red and white. And in that national championship, like I said, China Pellington, she was absolutely fantastic for Arizona because they essentially locked up Ari McDonald and she had to be the one to keep them rolling and keep, kept them in that game. So a huge shout out to all four of those, those ladies uh, for what they did for their respective schools and getting to the final four. Um, but to Alyssa and, and China, congratulations on getting to the national championship and Alyssa, congrats on winning. Yes. Yes. Big ups to all of them. Something that caught my eye right now is Javon's talking about how he spent some time with RJ one of the shows before he talked about how he spent some time with Shay. You know, there's something just about name dropping here. <laughs> but, no, but no, 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 no. Don't even think I'm, st I'm, st I'm staying in I'm staying in retirement. I'm just I'm just there to help the guys. Just I want to be a part of them. See see what they're going through. But the confidence they're uh, getting from putting some buckets on you, Javon, it's clearly working. <laughs> you're gonna have to make that a part of their routine, their off season routine. I'm just a pylon in the mix. Shout outs to Chris Boucher. He had that 38 and 19 game against the Chicago Bulls. I'm excited to see what he can do now with some front court help. We'll get into that a bit later. One name that we need to really recognize right now is Steve Nash. And I mean, becoming the first Canadian ever to be elected to the FIBA Hall of Fame, just an incredible accomplishment. We know everything that he's done. Megan, what are your some of your fave memories and maybe some of those Olympic moments as well? So right before they left for Sydney for the 2000 Olympics, um, they did a friendly, I believe it was against Brazil at McMaster University in Hamilton. I went to that game. I got a sweaty towel from Steve Nash, which now being a germaphobe kind of creeps me out. Um, and I got my shorts that I was wearing at the game signed by him and, you know, our, our friend of the show, Sherman Hamilton. Um, so to have that memory from my childhood and to now see, you know, what Sherman's doing on the broadcast side, but, you know, Steve getting inducted into the FIBA Hall of Fame, I think that's, I think it's fantastic. I think it's long overdue, quite frankly. Um, but that just opens the door for, for many to come. And, you know, hopefully our very own Javon Shepard, I think he deserves credit as well, too. And maybe a name in that uh, Hall of Fame one day to add into oh, Steve okay. Nash. Vivek, she's name dropping too. You got to get her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, Megan, you, we, we see her doing it big everywhere, right? We saw that Raptors game where she called. She's calling it with Kia. She's doing it all, everywhere, man. We got, got you to catch up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we know what you've done for the Team Canada program. When you look at what, you know, what the program was when Steve Nash was out there getting Canada to the Olympics and what the program is now, you being, having been a part of it, how do you look at that growth and the way he's influenced where we are now? I think you can't measure his impact because Steve has been somebody that's just so giving, right? Like there's been times where you've gone into, gone into training camps with Steve and he's the first person in the gym, whether he was a player at the time or in the front office side. And guys really got to learn from him. He was really meticulous in how he approached the game, his workouts. You know, he's a guy that would get to the free throw line and just close his eyes and, and, and envision making free throws. So, you know, and spend an hour doing that. So guys got to learn, you know, the, the younger generation, the Corys, the Kelly O'Linux, the Tristans, really got to see what it was like to, to work and hone your craft and not just work hard, but work smart at the, at the same time. So I think he really, you know, laid that pavement, laid that landscape and just showed us as Canadians, the whole Canadian culture of basketball, that it's real, that you can be not only a part of the NBA, not just on the NBA team, but be an MVP, uh, you know, and be that star status. And that's where we are now. I think that's a big part of how the game has grown. Um, and just to touch on his giving as well, I remember when Tyler Ennis first got drafted to, to the Phoenix Suns, uh, we were in national team training camp and Steve came in and Tyler came in just to, you know, be around the team and, and see what's up with every say what's up to everybody. Steve went over, gave him a hug, embraced him and congratulated him. And the second thing out of his mouth was, you know, I still have a home in Phoenix if you need somewhere to stay while you're there. That for a young guy coming into the NBA is something that means a lot because, you know, that's one less thing to worry about. And Steve was, you know, he's been a big mentor to, you know, to everybody. And just the, every, all the success you see today, um, he's played a part in it. Yeah, I mean, he's so giving. He's coming across as a player's coach right now, managing that Brooklyn Nets team. Obviously, KD's been in and out of the lineup. James Harden in and out of the lineup. Kyrie Irving has missed time as well. And so the way he's managing that situation, you know, maybe maybe there'll be have to be another induction as a coach. We, we wish all the luck to him. In some other Canadian basketball news, we got some more Canadian content on the Raptors. Kem Birch is a Raptor now. We got a little taste of what he can give the team uh, in that Knicks game. And he obviously addresses a, a need, a big need for this team the rest of the way at that center position. Megan, how do you think he can impact the Raptors coming down this stretch? I think the biggest area, you said it, Vivek, is uh, addressing the need that they had at center. I mean, you know, no disrespect to what Aaron, Aaron uh, Baines has done. It's just he's, I feel like this is not the right fit for him um, when it comes to the way he plays and the style that he plays the game of basketball. It's not a knock on him. It's just that's the reality of the game of basketball. Sometimes you're not the right fit. Uh, but I think the biggest winner in this situation is actually Chris Boucher because this will now take a lot of pressure off of the shoulders, the very slender shoulders of Chris <laughs> Boucher, and it will put some of the pressure and some of the onus on Dikem Birch playing, you know, in that backup role should Chris continue to be the starter. But now also, too, it gives an advantage to Nick Nurse where you can interchange them at that starting role because Kem has started games for the Orlando Magic prior to this move being made. So I think it gives them another way to play the game because he brings something different than Chris Boucher. And I think we we saw that in, you know, that game Chris had that you mentioned that insane 30 plus night, you know, 15 plus uh, game that he had. It was almost like he kind of had a sense that something was going to happen. So he said, you know what, let me go out and put put on for my country and put on for my team, knowing that something might be in the mix, um, just to remind people like what I can do. But I definitely think that this actually benefits Chris Boucher the most in this situation. And we know Raptors fans, they love Canadian content, every single player on that team, as soon as you're in, you're in market and you're part of that organization, you're automatically an honorary Canadian. But to have a, a born and raised Canadian, they absolutely love it. But I think in this one, everybody in that organization is winners, but Chris Boucher wins the most. Javon, you have to love the pride Ken Birch is already showing for putting on a Raptors uniform. It, when he was talking to media, he was talking about how he watched those dark days for the Raptors with his dad and his dad yelling at the TV. He made it clear that he absolutely wants to play for Canada if everything aligns. And one of the factors that might play in is the way insurance works. He's an upcoming free agent. Why don't you take us behind the scenes a little bit on how that actually works and impacts a player's decision? 
you know, where free agency is concerned, these guys have a tough decision to make because, and, and insurance, because they have to respect their bodies, respect their families, respect their livelihood. And at the same time, they all want to play for their, for their respective countries. Um, you know, a guy like Kimber, she's going to have a month now really to showcase his talents, you know, not only with just the Raptors, but across the NBA and hopefully land a lucrative contract. Now, how does that affect, you know, guys that are going into the national team? Hey, you know, injury, this is a contact sport. Injuries are inevitable. So, and we've seen it. We've seen Kelly Olynyk go down. We see a number of guys go down during, you know, national team competition, people competition. So you have to be cognizant of that. Um, and these guys have to understand that, hey, you know, one, I have to take care of my body. But two, you know, competing for a national team is also an opportunity for guys that are coming off an injury or guys that haven't played as much minutes to showcase their talents as well. It really depends. It's really going to come down to, you know, how well Kim plays in this, in this last, in the latter part of the season right here to really determine is he going to play or not. So, you know, so usually it's always going to be a tough decision and, um, you know, you just have to wish these guys the best. But at the end of the day, you have to understand that all these guys want to play for their country, but they still have to respect and protect their livelihood. Let's get into that favorite final segment of ours, the starting fives inspired by ESPN's top 25 under 25. We've got our Canadians under 25, both the men and the women. Throw it to Javon, who you have in your five? So, you know, I'm always Mr. Hot Take. So I got <laughs> Shea, I got RJ, I got Lugan Dorse. I have Elijah Fisher, who is my wild card because he is a high school kid. But, you know, when I'm looking at this under 25, I'm also measuring the ceiling of this. He's, you know, top four in the nation right now. Um, and his, he has that competitive nature that you can't really, you know, you can't measure that. So I'm, I'm really high on this. And I think if you give him two, three years, he's really going to be a stud um, at the NBA level. And then lastly, Jamal Murray. Megan, who do you have on your five? So uh, like Shep, I have Shay, I have Jamal. I also have RJ Barrett. Um, Nikhil Alexander Walker, so I've I've got the family connection there, and then um, like Jamal or like Javon, sorry, I have not necessarily a true wild card, but I went someone a little bit younger in Andrew Nemhard. Um, you know what he did with Gonzaga uh, this season, and just being able to play the game and be a, another you know basketball IQ style point guard for uh, Coach Mark Few and. I thought he was really, really important for their final four matchup against UCLA. And I thought he was very integral in that national championship game. Although it didn't go in their favor, I just thought that he brought something that they needed. So I want a lot of fans to keep an eye on him and what he does should he return to Gonzaga or if he continues um, the, the, you know, the hope of entering the draft early or playing overseas. So definitely someone that we want to keep our eye on for sure. And even over the course of the season, you look at them missing Suggs and he stepped in and they didn't miss a beat. And so uh, that's something he should take a lot of pride in. The other name I'll throw into the mix, Brandon Clark. I think, you know, he's got a bit of a tough situation in Memphis with all the bigs that they've got, but he's still finding that time to shine. So shout out to him. Uh, let's switch it up to the women. I think we've pretty much got uh, the same names on, on the list. I, I think one name that I'll throw out on my end is uh, Haley Brown. I think she really lit it up for Michigan, especially beyond the arc. Uh, who, who's someone that uh, was really shining for you, Javon? I got Bridget Carlton, Aaliyah Edwards, uh, Shayna Pellington. Uh, who else do I have here? Letitia Am Amir. But this is also my, my wild card, and I have Alyssa Jerome. Statistically, she may not she may not jump out at you, but I think you know her being a senior, her winning this national championship, she's a winner. You can't really measure that. You have that's invaluable. Now, some players are also better pros than they are collegiate players, and I'm somebody that can attest to that too. So I think she has you know a bright future ahead of her. And again, you have to give her flowers. Anybody anybody that wins a championship to me um, is deserving. What about you, Megan? Thousand percent. And also too to get a shout out. For, from you know the the great Tara Vanderveer for your leadership throughout this entire COVID situation because keep in mind Stanford was displaced for um, I believe it was upwards of nine weeks when the season yep. started and Tara Vanderveer gave Alyssa Jerome a lot of credit for the leadership that she had throughout this entire season so it's one thing to have numbers and I know Javon you said her numbers don't really pop off the page but it's another thing to get that level of respect from your head coach and one of the best in the game so a huge credit to her as well too um, but like like Javon I basically had the same list uh, where he had Alyssa Jerome I had Michaela Ennis out of uh, Virginia Tech 
no immediate uh, relation sibling wise to the Ennis family. Um, could be some lineage down the way of, you know, cousins or something like that. But I think she's another player that we should definitely keep our eye on. Um, like I said, out of Virginia Tech. And, you know, we could maybe see her within the senior women's national program. Um, but I think, you know, we need to continue to give these players both on the men's and women's side their flowers now while we can enjoy it, while fans can enjoy it, and while they can enjoy it. Because uh, I think if, if 2020 and, and 2021 have taught us anything, it is to celebrate these athletes while they are physically playing the game so they can enjoy it at the same time. Absolutely. There you go. We hope you enjoyed our list. Let us know who is on your under 25 list. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and we will catch you again in a couple of weeks.